Welcome back to Acosta's Anatomy. I'm Travis Ray, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss insulin and glucagon. Uh, but before I get started, make sure to like and subscribe. So overall, insulin and glucagon are hormones secreted by the pancreas that are going to help to regulate our blood glucose levels. And the first thing I want to mention about our blood glucose levels is what's the importance? What's the significance of keeping these blood glucose levels stable? So there are certain types of tissues that require, that rely on glucose in order to meet their energy demands. So some of these tissues include the brain as well as the retina. So the first hormone that we're going to talk about is glucagon. So glucagon is what's known as a catabolic hormone, meaning that it breaks things down. And glucagon is what's going to be secreted by the alpha cells. So these alpha cells are found here within the pancreatic islet. So easy way to remember this, so glucagon, there is an A for, it's found within the alpha cells. So A and alpha. Okay, so glucagon, it's a catabolic hormone, and it's going to be released whenever we're in the fasted state, meaning that we haven't had a meal in a while. So then, what's the overall function of, of glucagon? So what glucagon does is it helps to increase our blood glucose levels or our blood sugar. So then what are, its, what are some of its targets? So its targets are the liver, so liver cells and fat cells. Well, what occurs once glucagon binds? So within the liver, a process occurs which is known as glycogenolysis. So this is a catabolic process in which we are breaking down glycogen to get more glucose. There's also another process that occurs which is known as gluconeogenesis. So we are forming new glucose. So then what about the fat cells? Well, we're gonna, lipolysis is gonna occur. So we're gonna use some of those lipase enzymes in order to break that fat down. So then, what stimulates the release of glucagon? So glucagon is gonna be released whenever we are hypoglycemic, meaning that we have low blood sugar. So we gotta increase it if it's low. So we stimulate the release of glucagon from those alpha cells within the pancreas it gets into the blood, so then what happens once it gets to the target tissue? So for instance, here within the liver. Well, we undergo a secondary messenger system. So this secondary messenger system we already are familiar with. So it, we're gonna, what's gonna happen is we'll have an increase in the levels of cyclic AMP. From there, we activate something which is known as protein kinase A. Protein kinase A, what this does, it phosphorylates or it activates glycogen, phosphorylase, and it converts glycogen into glucose. So then from there, that glucose will then get released into the blood and we can increase our blood glucose levels. So now that we've talked about glucagon, let's move on to insulin. <clears throat> So insulin is what's known as an anabolic hormone, meaning that it helps to build things. And insulin is going to be secreted by the beta cells within the pancreatic islets of the pancreas. So I'm gonna write that here, so beta cells. So insulin, it's an anabolic hormone that's gonna be released whenever we are in the fed state, meaning that we recently had a meal. So for instance, today I had me some, uh, had some Panda Express. So right after I had that Panda, my insulin levels, they started to spike. Okay, so then what's the overall function? What does insulin do? 
So insulin, it helps to lower our blood glucose levels. So the reason our blood glucose levels are decreased is because the glucose is entering into the cell in order to meet those energy demands. So then what are some of the targets for insulin? So insulin, it'll target the liver, the fat, and then muscle cells. So the processes that are going to occur within um, these particular uh, types of tissue. So within the liver, you have glycogenesis. So we're making more glycogen. Within the fat cells, we have lipogenesis. So all of that excess glucose level, all that excess glucose can be stored as fat, as triglycerides. So then within muscle, we have glycogenesis as well as amino acid uptake. So we're increasing the uptake of these amino acids in order for protein synthesis to occur. So then one thing I wanna mention is that, yes, we are building, uh, building these particular things here, but remember, we always have to meet the energy demands first always have to meet the energy energy demands first and we have to have enough ATP within all of our cells before we start to build things okay so stimulus for release so I've already talked about here for glucagon the stimulus for the re release is whenever we are hypoglycemic so the stimulus for um, insulin is going to be whenever we are hyper glycemic hyperglycemic meaning that we have high blood glucose levels so what insulin does once again it decreases those blood glucose levels by getting it the glucose into the cell okay so once we stimulate the release of insulin so that's what I have um, represented here so this is what's going to uh, represent one of these uh, beta cells. So then how do we release insulin? So we have a lot of glucose that's circulating here into the blood. And so what will happen is that glucose is going to flow here into the cell. And it flows into what's known as a GLUT2 transporter. So it flows in here through this GLUT transporter and then it gets broken down. So it gets broken down and then it goes through glycolysis, it goes through um, the Krebs cycle, and then it also goes through electron transport chain, and then we then increase the production of our ATP. So then what happens after we increase the production of ATP, what will result is that we close this particular channel. So this particular channel is what's known as a potassium channel. So by closing this channel, we prevent, we prevent potassium from leaving the cell. So if we're preventing this positive thing from leaving the cell, what results is membrane depolarization. So that's what occurs along this way. So when we have membrane depolarization, what will result is this calcium channel opening. So C, this calcium channel, it's going to open and so calcium is going to influx. And so this is important because that insulin that we have stored here in this vesicle, that's what's going to allow the release of it. So then over here, letter D, this is where exocytosis of insulin occurs. So this should be familiar. If you think about from last semester, we learned about the neurons. So remember the presynaptic neuron in order to release neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft, you have to have the influx of calcium to do that. So this is a similar situation here in order for us to release insulin and then get it into the blood. Okay, so now that insulin is released into the blood, it's going to travel to its target tissue. And so that's what I have uh, represented here. So these are, cells that are, these are cells that are going to be dependent upon insulin in order for glucose to get into the cell because what's going to happen is the um, glute transporter has to get translocated here to the apical surface 
uh, within this cell. Okay, so what number one represents, so this is the insulin receptor. So remember once again, insulin is a protein or peptide uh, derived hormone. So it's going to bind to its receptor here. So the insulin receptor has an alpha subunit, also has a, a beta subunit. So it'll bind to its receptor and then it activates uh, something which is known, so what I have here, the Roman numeral two. So this is a tyrosine, so tyrosine kinase. So this tyrosine kinase, once insulin binds, it undergoes autophosphorylation. So it phosphorylates itself. So autophosphorylation occurs. And then once this happens, this is what will result in what's known as the PI3K pathway. So we activate this PI3K pathway. And then from there, that's what results. So in this vesicle, we have our transporter protein. So what I have here, so translocation, let me write that in. So translocation. So translocation of the glute transporter, which is known as glute 4. So the particular type, type of tissues where glute 4 is found, so this is found first off within the muscle as well as within the fat cells. So remember, once again, you have to have insulin binding to its receptor in order to get the translocation of GLUT4 so that way glucose can enter into the cell within muscle and fat so that way we can undergo lipogenesis and then we can also undergo um, glycogenesis and then you'll also have the activation of an amino acid uh, transporter there with insulin. Okay, so then what about some of the, of the types of tissues that don't require insulin, that are insulin dependent? So some of these examples include within the brain. So the tr specific transporter is what's known as GLUT1. You also have, so within the liver, you have GLUT2 as well as the kidney. So the kidney is GLUT2. So remember, if it's GLUT2, that means that it does not require insulin in order for the uptake of glucose. That's going to do it for this lecture.